the first thing we know about the universe is that it's really really big. And because the universe is so big it's often beyond the reach of our instruments and of our ideas cosmologist Michael Turner from the first stone. Tools to see fairing ships to the internet technology has been at the heart of human exploration and discovery. But to start exploring space the final frontier humans first had to master a deceptively simple piece of technology the telescope telescopes have opened a window into a world of science that before we couldn't have imagined it but while our knowledge of the universe has grown exponentially because of telescopes they also challenge the prevailing science and status quo every step of the way this is also true for James Webb the hype surrounding the largest telescope we've ever launched into space was big and decades long but as the stunning James Webb images show its view of the universe is groundbreaking in an extraordinary discovery James Webb has just captured seven colossal structures at the edge of the observable universe shedding light on formative years in the history of the universe that have thus far been beyond reach the formation and assembly of first galaxies join us as we dig deep into James Webb's shocking discovery that will blow your mind for as long as humans have roamed the earth we have sought to find our place in the cosmos. From the city-states of ancient Greece to the soaring capstones of the Egyptian pyramids across the deserts and towering mountains of ancient China down to the rolling plains of Mesoamerica humans have sought to understand how the universe works they developed mathematics to trace the motions of the planets estimated the circumference of the Earth by walking from city to city created star tables and timekeeping costs and even recorded celestial events. Like High's Comet Supernova and Eclipses with Time, we have refined our models of the universe using ellipses. Johannes Kepler reconfigured celestial motions. Galileo revolutionized CERN's heliocentric model of the solar system by discovering that the Sun, not the Earth, is the body around which all other elements of the solar System orbit Isaac Newton developed the theory of gravity which was later supplanted by Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity discovery by discovery we paint in the gaps of the picture of our universe and yet somehow with each brush stroke that image morphs evolving into something ever-changing new and unrecognizable the universe that Kepler and Galileo Kernus and Kepler Newton and Galileo and even Einstein understood is different from the one we know. Today today's understanding of the universe is unsettling it is not one that fits in a tidy little box with neat lines and a perfect lid our universe is mystifying and complex it defies expectations for starters our universe is not a static enclosed entity our UN years is expanding from everywhere all at once the fabric of spacetime is stretching away from everywhere else like an inflating balloon carrying Galaxies along with it photons traveling the lanes of the cosmos are stretched. Along with spacetime their wavelengths growing ever longer or redder thus red. Shifting with the expansion of space our universe isn't expanding into anything. To our knowledge there there is no extra dimension around the universe rather space itself is expanding causing the space between galaxy clusters the largest gravitationally bound objects in the universe to get bigger and bigger with time and this leads us to the Following unsettling conclusion there's no center to our universe everywhere is the center. Because everything everywhere is moving away from everything else all at once but the universe isn't just expanding. It's accelerating with each passing moment an unknown repulsive persistent force. Dubbed dark energy is stretching the fabric of the universe dark energy is a fundamental property of space itself invisible smooth and constant and yet we are entirely unsure what it truly is and then there is dark matter the invisible clumpy matter that binds galaxies together in many ways dark matter is is the corollary to dark energy where dark energy stretches space apart dark matter knits matter together they are both dull never before observed but perhaps the biggest surprise other than the astounding technical performance of the telescope which is arguably twice as good as it was designed to achieve on many fronts is what it's seen in the realm of galaxies while we knew James Webb would push far past what Hubble's limited capabilities have seen we had no idea its performance would be so revolutionary in such an early stage of its observation campaigns there are greater numbers of galaxies out there than Hubble ever saw including at distances that Hubble would never be sensitive to some of these galaxies appear more evolved more massive and at earlier stages than not only we'd previously seen but than many models and 
simulations had expected some of them might even be massive and quite evolved at epochs. Between 200 and 350 million years after the Big Bang the previous confirmed. Record holder from Hubble was already 407 million years after the Big Bang. Many of these galaxies, even the earliest ones, are shaped like disks. Rather than being irregular, Webb's superior resolving power and imaging capabilities have shown this even for galaxies that previously with Hubble looked like irregular blobs and finally nearby galaxies in. Contrast to what Hubble saw appear smaller and more compact with Webb's. Improved resolution This is interesting particularly to scientists in a lot of ways we mentioned earlier that the fluctuations that the universe was born with had a particular set of properties. Many of which probably sounded like jargon to you in plain English. What this means for all cosmic distance scales is that 16% of those fluctuations are denser than average by Z.Z, Z, so 3% or more 2.5% of them are overdense by 0.006% or more 0.15% of them are overt by 0.009% or more 0.0 f5% of them are overdense by 0.022% or more and only 0 out 1% of them are initially overdense by 0.05% or more even if we take these rare large initial fluctuations and let them grow at the maximum allowable rate it's very difficult to get enough galaxies that will be massive enough evolved enough and that will form early enough to be consistent with James Webb's observations this set of observations presents an exciting challenge for our modern cosmological theories and an exciting challenge for cosmologists to try and puzzle out why do these galaxies have the properties that they do can our standard model of cosmology be reconciled with these observations and if not what sort of implications does that have for what else we might learn about dark matter the expanding universe or other aspects of our cosmic history these are all legitimate research questions that people are actively working on right now at this very moment however while James Webb call into question our cosmology it's also continuing to provide answers about the earliest days of the universe in a breathtaking discovery this time machine has begun to shed light on formative years in the history of the universe that have thus far been beyond reach the formation and assembly of galaxies for the first time a protocluster of seven galaxies has been confirmed at a distance that astronomers refer to as redshift 7.9 or a mere 650 million years after the Big Bang based on the data collected astronomers calculated the nascent cluster's future development finding that it will likely grow in size and mass to resemble the Coma cluster a monster of the modern universe according to Tokuhiro Morishita of Infrared Processing and Analysis Center California Institute of Technology the lead author of the study. Published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters this is a very special unique site of accelerated galaxy evolution and Webb gave us the unprecedented ability to measure the velocities of these seven galaxies and confidently confirm that they are bound together in a protocluster the precise measurements captured by Webb's near-infrared spectrograph instrument were key to confirming the galaxy's collective distance and the high velocities at which they are moving within a halo of dark matter more than 2 million miles per hour or 1,000 kilometers per second the spectral data allowed astronomers to model and map the future. Survey mission will yield even more results on early galaxy clusters with 200 times Hubble's infrared field of view in a single shot Roman will be able to identify more protocluster galaxy candidates, which Webb can follow up to confirm with its spectroscopic instruments. The Roman mission is currently targeted for launch by May 2027 according to Tommaso T.R. of the University of California Los Angeles. A member of the protocluster research team, it is amazing that the science we can now dream of doing now that we have Webb with this small protocluster of seven galaxies at this great distance, we had a 100% spectroscopic confirmation rate, demonstrating the future potential for mapping dark matter and filling in the timeline of the universe's early development in another remarkable finding James Webb has just gazed at the Crab Nebula a supernova remnant located 6500 light -like years away in the constellation Taurus since the recording of this energetic event by 11th century. Astronomers the Crab Nebula has continued to draw attention and additional study as scientists seek to understand the conditions behavior and after effects of supernova through 
thorough study of the crab a relatively nearby example uncovering the details of the initial explosion required looking back through worldwide records as no Western or European sources recorded it. The first discovered source came from the Chinese Empire where astronomers recorded what they called a guest star first appearing on July 4, 1054 contemporaneously sightings were recorded in Japan and the Middle East revealing that this star remained visible for around two years before fading away below the naked eye threshold in hindsight this is fairly typical behavior for a core collapse supernova swiftly rising to a tremendous peak. Brightness that's thousands to millions of times the brightness of the original star then gradually fading away over the span of months to years, then hundreds of years later, the remnant of this ancient explosion although the connection wasn't made until much later was discovered by John Bevis back in 1731 of course back in the early 18th. Century astronomers weren't much interested in these fuzzy smudges that appeared in the sky, they were interested in things that were nearby like planets, moons, and comets, that's why Bevis's discovery went largely unnoticed until 1758 when Howe's comet was due to return. The comet previously seen in 1456, 1531, 16007, and 1682 was now due to return as predicted by Edmund Howe back in 1705, although had died back in 1742 astronomer Charles Messier had taken up searching for the comet's return while searching a particular part of the sky he accidentally noticed this object and first confused it for the vaunted comet before realizing his mistake Messier determined not to let focus on aleophysics by reproposing new horizons to exclusively examine how our home star shapes conditions in the outer solar system and toward the hazy boundary with interstellar space that Transition would swap the mission from NASA's Planetary Science Division to its Aleophysics Fix Division, and given that Stern and his team did not heed the Space Agency's request to submit a proposal by November 2022 to dedicate New Horizons solely to Aleophysics the transition would remove them from the Mission 2 We refused to write a proposal that terminated the Kuiper Belt Science Stern says it's outrageous that you would terminate the only mission purpose-built and sent to the Kuiper Belt. While it's still collecting unique data are according to Jim Green NASA's former chief scientist and former head of its planetary science efforts such a heliocentric shift would have greatly limited the mission's scientific output it basically pairs down the science team to next to nothing and really operates the spacecraft with a minimal cadre from his perspective if he was the division. Chief he would not have made that decision he says the reversal was a good decision and will allow the right science for the mission during the right times the decision to halt New Horizons Kuiper Belt studies originally emerged in 2022 from NASA's annual review of most of its planetary science missions a process in which the space agency assesses their current status and future potential although this review acknowledged many benefits of New Horizons continuing its current mission. The report also flagged a key weakness in the absence of a suitable rendezvous. Target the spacecraft can only study Kuiper Belt objects from afar and in far. Fewer numbers than what various ground-based telescopes can achieve perhaps less than a dozen the proposed. Studies of Kuiper Belt objects are unlikely to markedly improve knowledge the review stated noting the spacecraft's priorities should focus on aleophysics and astrophysics faith fast of the Planetary Science Institute who led the team that assessed New Horizons for the review says she and her colleagues did not intend their work to justify ending the mission's planetary science studies the team was being credited or blamed for the mission potentially losing the planetary science side of things she says we didn't say that we simply said that all the science together is greater in magnitude than the one portion of science Stern says the still has much to offer as it moves through the Kuiper belt including feats that cannot be replicated on Earth such as observing the changing brightness of Kuiper belt objects as they rotate when you do that repeatedly from different angles you can determine the shape he says but you can never do that from Earth because you never see the Kuiper belt objects from significantly different angles the spacecraft can also search for binaries co-orbiting Cooper belt objects in a way Earth-based observers cannot and can collect dust scattered away from distant creeper belt Objects the prospect of visiting a third object remains ever present too if a viable target can be found the spacecraft is projected to exit the known boundaries of the Kuiper belt in 
2028, at which point Stern agrees the Kuiper Belt science could end by some estimates the spacecraft could continue operating until 2050 when it will be far beyond the general accepted boundary of interstellar space at present no other. Spacecraft bound for the Kuiper Belt is in development the next possibility might be interstellar probe a proposal from Applied Physics Laboratory to send a spacecraft to interstellar space. According to Ralph McNutt who helms the proposal team at Applied Physics Laboratory optimistically assuming Interstellar probe becomes a reality and launches in 2036 that would get you out to the same region of space as New Horizons probably within a decade or so so potentially up to the mid 2040s in June Green and other members of the space science community signed a letter to NASA urging the space agency to reconsider its decision and noted alarm at the proposed abandonment of Kuiper Belt science we ask NASA the Administration and Congress to reverse course, they wrote in September. The U.S.-based National Space Society made a similar appeal in its own letter continue New Horizons so we don't miss out on new discoveries from this rare perfectly positioned and fully functional mission the letter stated not. All astronomers agree that New Horizons remaining Kuiper Belt investigations will be worthwhile however Lou says. Transitioning the mission to a focus on aleophysics and astrophysics would be a reasonable decision because ground-based telescopes can surpass the spacecraft creeper belt capabilities in many respects especially by studying many more queer belt objects at a much faster cadence if you just want to use the spacecraft for monitoring Kuiper belt objects I would argue it might be better done from the ground she says and the prospects of a third flyby are becoming increasingly remote because no obvious Targets have been discovered if they find a new candidate great, but the loo hanging fruits have been picked she says. Mike Brown of the California Institute of Technology who discovered the object eyes in 2003 which led to Pluto's. Demotion from a planet to a dwarf planet has similar concerns he said that these. Decisions are always tough, there is a spacecraft there it can do unique things. But ultimately it is a zero-sum cost-benefit analysis unless there is a new target for a close flyby it's hard for me to see why spending a ton of money is justified if the science can be done on a show string then perhaps that's fine but of course a show string in space is probably many full scientific programs on earth for now new horizons will continue its studies of the kuiper belt and will remain the only spacecraft likely to do so for many years to come what knock-on effects its ongoing operations will have on future projects alluded to by nasa remains to be seen Far beyond Pluto one of our most distant emissaries still speeds on into the unknown that's all the information that we have for you today don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Today's episode subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes and be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve as always always thanks for watching and we will see you next time.